Hello YouTube, today is May 11, 2019, and I'm going to be demonstrating for you the startup procedures of the Cessna Citation S550 airplane. This airplane was just released by Coronado for X-Plane 11. I'm using X-Plane version 11.33. I'm also using Track IR, and as you can see it tracks my head movements via a IR transmitter attached to the headset and an IR receiver attached to the monitor. So without further ado, let's move through our checklist items. You'll hear them and I'll execute them as we move forward. Oxygen quantity, checked. Oxygen quantity, which is right here, is in the green. Circuit breakers, check in. Circuit breakers, all in on right, all in on left. Anti-ice slash to ice switches, off. All anti-ice switches, which are the green switches, in the off position. Generators, except for GPU start, gen. Today we are using a ground power unit, so they're going to remain in the off position. If you were doing a battery start, you would have both left and right generators on. I'm going to go outside the airplane. You can see the power unit attached to the airplane there. Fuel boost pumps, norm. Fuel boost pumps, norm position, left and right. Ignitions, norm. Ignitions are in the norm position, both left and right. Cross feed, off. Fuel cross feed is in the off position. Gyro slave switch, auto. Gyro slave switch is currently in manual position, switch to auto. Standby gyro, on slash verify power slash off. Standby gyro, currently in the on position, turning it off, and our instrument flag indicates that the standby gyro is off. Seat belt sign, check slash off. Seat belt sign, checking, and off. Anti-skid, off. Anti-skid is off. Cabin pressure slash rate control, set. Cabin pressure, we're going to set that for field elevation plus 400. We're not going to climb very high at all today. We're flying to SeaTac, which is pretty close to the same airport elevation as here, which is uh, around 300 feet. So there's 500, there's 700. Throttles, cut off. Throttles, cut off position and confirmed. Engine sink. Off. Engine sink is off. Windshield bleed valves closed. Windshield bleed valves closed left, closed right. Battery switch, bat, check 24 volt minimum. Battery switch, bat, voltage select, bat, and showing 24 volts. AC power and master avionics on. AC power, master avionics, on. Rotary test, <coughs> checked. Rotary test. Pause, system test OK. Terrain awareness test start. Terrain awareness system passed. Terrain awareness test complete. Left engine fire. Right engine fire. Ready. Test is good. Parking brake set. Parking brake is set. Landing gear, three green slash no red. Landing gear control down, three green, no red. Engine instruments, no flags. No flags. Electric elevator trim, trim disc checked. Checking trim disc. Check. Airspeed bug set. Airspeed bug currently set for 200. I'm going to set it for 180 for climb out. GPS slash FMC programmed. Okay, so we're going to bring up the flight management computer. Here we have the control display unit. We'll talk about some of the other uh, displays in the airplane. This is the multifunction display. It comes up in a 2D view. I typically keep that on and down here in the right side during flight. And uh, then we have the horizontal situation indicator, the electronic horizontal situation indicator right here. Also 
available in a 2D view. I'm going to go ahead and make that go away for now. And here we have the electronic attitude director indicator. That also comes up in a 2D view. I don't find that useful though. So we're going to go ahead and program our route into the FMC. Um, I use Sky Vector for planning purposes. <clears throat> Sky Vector is an, a real world aeronautical chart and flight plan planning tool. Uh, it defaults to the VFR, world VFR view. We're going to switch it over to the world low IFR view. And we're going to bring up our flight plan and enter our departure and arrival airports. And then we're going to pick a logical route based on today's flight. Departing from Kilo Tango India Whiskey, arriving at Kilo Sierra Echo Alpha. And we're going to flop over, listen to our ATIS, find out what runway uh, is in use over at SeaTac and uh, the departing runway here at Tacoma Narrows. Now, it's not very often you're able to tune to the ATIS at your airport uh, destination. We are today because we're so close to it. But you can use Sky Vector to determine by bringing the cursor over the nearest weather station. In this case, it's based at SeaTac. And it gives you uh, a lot of useful information that's current. It gives you the Zulu time that the, uh, that the information was reported. It gives you wind direction and speed, which currently at SeaTac is 210 knots, uh, 210 at six knots, visibility 10 statute miles, and then it gives you cloud data. It gives you your altimeter setting of 29 or 9 or 0, et cetera. So we can predict the runway in use based on that. Uh, but keep in mind that that can change. So let's go ahead and bring up the Tacoma Narrows Airport diagram. And we're going to put that over here. We're going to bring up the Seattle-Tacoma Airport diagram. Put that over here. And we're going to look at our frequencies for both. And we're going to program those into our FMC. So we're going to bring up both ATIS 12405 at Tacoma Narrows and 1180 at SeaTac. So we're going to go over here to our nav radio. 124.05. We're going to put that in our COM2. And 118 .0. And we'll put that in standby for COM2. Looks like it was already there. So, so let's go ahead and turn on our COM2 radio. and Tacoma Narrows Information Kilo. 1700 Zulu weather. Wind light and variable. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 17. Dew point 10. Altimeter 2990. Arriving runway 17. Departing runway 17. Advise on initial contact you have Kilo. All right, information kilo is current. I'm going to go ahead and set the barometric pressure of 2990 or zero in the pilot's altimeter and in the co-pilot's altimeter. 2990 or zero confirmed. 2990 or zero Tacoma confirmed. Tacoma Narrows information kilo. 1700. Okay, now we're going to flip over to SeaTac 118.0 and give it a listen. Seattle Tacoma INTL information kilo. 1700 Zulu weather. Wind light and variable, visibility more than 10. Sky clear, temperature 18, 2.9. Altimeter 2989. Arriving runways 16 left, 16 center, 16 right. Departing runways 16 left, 16 right. Advise on initial contact you have kilo. Okay, so we have current ATIS here at Tacoma Narrows and at SeaTac and our barometric pressure is entered for our departure airport, so we're good to go there. Now let's go back to our flight planning and pick a logical route. Now normally, uh, the controller would vector you in for your uh, approach at SeaTac, but today we're gonna simulate air traffic control communications. So we're gonna go ahead and choose and program a route and fly that route. So we want to approach from the north to the south for landing on runway 16. And let's go ahead and take a look at 
where we want to go uh, on the airport. So let's plan on parking here at North Ramp. So let's choose an approach for runway 16 left. That'll give us a short taxi over to our desired parking area. So we're going to go ahead and bring up SeaTac and we're going to look at 16 left approaches. They have both a Yeah, so they have a 16 left category 2-3. I'm just going to go ahead and pick the ILS runway 16 left approach here. And let's take a look at initial approach fixes. There's a few options. We have initial approach at Zedkey, initial approach at Kenmo, initial approach at Griffey. Um, let's go ahead and pick the Griffey as a initial approach fix. So let's go back to our FMC. We're going to go to our flight plan page. We're going to enter our departure airport first, Kilo Tango India Whiskey. Entered Kilo Sierra Echo Alpha. Entered. Our flight number today is going to be Sky 56, SKY56. And anytime you see the blue bar over the execute button, go ahead and execute to confirm your entries. So let's go over here and uh, actually we're going to stay on the flight plan page and go ahead and enter our route. So let's go ahead and pick a route. I'll move these out of our way. So since we want to come from the north, we want to find a logical route to bring us north of the Seattle Tacoma Airport. So let's let's go west here to Caro intersection. So that's in our flight plan. And, and then we're going to go north from there. Let's go north from there to the RP intersection. So that's in our flight plan. So Caro via Victor 287 to RP. And uh, I'm not seeing Griffey on here, which is our initial approach fix. So let's go ahead and we're going to enter Griffey up here, G-R-I-F-Y, and ask Sky Vector to find that for us. So Sky Vector showing us where Griffey is right here, uh, but, there, but it's not indicated on the chart, but we know it's right there. So let's go ahead and put one more waypoint in before Griffey, and that's going to be low file. And then let's go ahead and enter Griffey, G-R-I-F-Y, right there, and enter. So that looks like that looks like a logical route for us. Now let's pick an altitude. So we're showing along Victor 287, uh, 6,000, 6,000. So we're flying eastbound, IFR, so we have to fly odd thousands, westbound will be even thousands. So we'll go ahead and take 6,000 plus 1,000. So we'll go ahead and program 7,000 into our FMC. All right, let's put our first waypoint in, which again is the Caro intersection, then RP, then Lofal, then Griffey. So we're gonna go ahead and put Caro, we'll put that in our scratch pad, C-A-R-R-O. We're going to enter it right here and execute. So now we're going to go to our next page. And if you'll notice over here on our multifunction display, it went ahead and put that first leg in there for us. So we're going to go to the next page and we're going to enter our next waypoint right here, which is RP. A R P E E. Enter, execute, then low file, L O F A L, and enter, and execute. Let's take a look at our legs on the legs page. So we have departure airport, Carl RP low file. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead to the cruise, and we're going to put our, set our cruise altitude of 7000 here go back to our legs page. All right, so now we're gonna select our departure and arrival using the departure and arrival function. 
departure runway we know is 17 based on ATIS, so we're going to select 17 and execute. We're not going to be use a standard, using a standardized instrument departure today. Wouldn't make sense really for our short flight. So let's uh, leave that, call it good. So now we're going to go to our arrival at SeaTac. And uh, runways 16 are in use. Again, we want to pick 16 left ILS. So we pick that. And then we're going to select transition at Griffey because that's going to be our initial approach fix. Now we'll go ahead and execute. And again, we're not going to use a standard terminal arrival route because, again, it's, it's a very short flight. So I think we're good to go there. We're getting a message, unable 4000 at Helzer. Let's find out why that is. So Helzer, Helzer is, uh, that's where we're going to be intercepting the localizer from Griffey at Helzer 4000 at Helzer, we're starting at 6,000 at Griffey. I don't see any issues with getting down to 4,000 there, so I'm just going to ignore that. Let's take a look at our legs. Runway 17, Caro RP low file. Okay, so we have a discontinuity here. The way to fix that is we're going to select the waypoint after the discontinuity, which is Griffey, and we're going to overwrite the discontinuity, and then we're going to execute. And that should stitch our flight plan together. 17 Caro RP low file, Griffey, and then it automatically programmed in um, our entire ILS runway 16 left approach. And the next page is going to be our missed approach. So it looks like climb to 900, then direct Tebney intersection, direct Millet intersection, and then hold at Millet. Okay, so that's good to go. And let's move along with our checklist. Fuel quantity, sufficient slash balanced. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this multifunction display for now. And we're showing just under a thousand pounds left and right tanks, more than enough fuel for today's short flight. Before starting engines, chocks removed. So we're going to remove our static elements. Static elements removed, confirm, and confirmed. Seats and pedals. Adjusted. They are adjusted. Beacon slash navigation lights on. Beacon on. Navigation lights on. Cockpit lights as required. We're not going to need them in, under these conditions, but if we did, uh, they're all right here. So we'll go ahead and leave those alone. Standby gyro on. Standby gyro on. AC power and master avionics. Off. AC power. Off. Master avionics. Off. And this is uh, when we start the engines, it could cause a voltage spike and damage your avionics equipment. Air conditioning. Off. Air conditioning rocker switch is here, and it is in the off position. Cabin door. Lock slash light out. The cabin door is closed and locked. And there is no cabin door enunciator lit up. Before start check, complete. Starting engines. First engine ignition, on. We're going to start the right engine first, right engine ignition on. First engine, start. And starter for right engine is engaged. N2, verify RPM increase. This is our N2 turbine, and we are showing an RPM increase. First engine throttle, wait for N2 above 8% then set to flight idle. Okay, we're above 8% here, so we're going to go ahead and lift the gate, raise the right throttle forward, and back down to the flight idle position. ITT, monitor within limits. Monitoring the interturbine temperature for our right engine. It's within the green, and it's coming back down. Is it good to go there? N1, verify rotation slash RPM increase. This is our N1, and we are showing rotation and an RPM increase, so good to go there. Wait, first engine stabilized. First engine is stable. Second engine ignition on. Second engine ignition on. Second engine start. Second engine starter engaged. And two, verify RPM increase. Showing an increase. Second engine throttle. Wait for N2 above 8%, then set to flight idle. We're above 8%. 
going to lift the gate, raise left throttle forward and back down to flight idle position. ITT, monitor within limits. Monitoring ITT. And we're in the green, and it's coming down. N1, verify rotation slash RPM increase. N1 is showing an RPM increase, good to go. Wait second engine stabilized. And second engine Before is Before taxi. GPU, disconnected. Disconnecting ground power unit. Generator switches, Gen. Generator switches, Gen, left and right. Volt slash amps, checked. Voltage 24, amps 50 left, 50 right, good to go there. AC power and master avionics, on. AC power on, master avionics on. Passenger advisory light, pass slash safety. Passenger advisory light, on. Cabin pressure and temp controls, set slash auto. Cabin pressure is set and our temp control is set to auto. Gyro pressure, checked. The gyro pressure, which is right here, is in the green and good. Air conditioning, fan or off. We're gonna set our conditioning to fan. Circuit breakers, check right slash check left. Rechecking right, all in. Rechecking left, all in. Belts and harnesses, fastened. Before taxi check, complete. Taxi. Check departure runway. Bugged slash verified. Departure runway is 17. So we're going to go ahead and set our heading bug to 170. And set for 170. ATIS and clearance. Copied. We're going to recheck ATIS to make sure nothing has changed. Com 2. Tacoma Narrows Information Lima. 1700 Zulu weather. Wind light and variable. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 19. Dew point 10. Alright, so it's still information kilo. We're good there. Let's check SeaTac. Seattle Tacoma INTL Information Lima. 1700 Zulu weather. Wind light and variable. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear, temperature 21, dew point 9, altimeter 2989. Arriving runways 16 left, 16 center, 16 right. Okay, so SeaTex uh, at information Lima. Want to check one more time here. Tacoma Narrows information Lima. Okay, we're at Lima. 1700 Zulu weather. Wind light and variable, visibility more than 10. Sky clear, temperature 19, dew point 10, altimeter 2991. Arriving runway 17, departing runway 17. Advise on initial contact, you have Lima. Okay, so we're current with Lima, and I, I made the change 2991 on pilot co pilot altimeters. All right, so good to go on ATIS. Let's go ahead and program our ground frequency for here at Tacoma. 121.8 ground and 1185 tower. 1185. 121.8. And 1185. Is in standby. So we're tuned to ground, and we'll go ahead and get our, our clearance. There's no clearance delivery here at Tacoma Narrow, so we're contacting ground to get our clearance. We're going to simulate that we filed IFR according to the flight plan that we entered into our FMC. <coughs> Tacoma Ground Sky 56 IFR to SeaTac, ready to copy.
Sky 56 cleared to SeaTac as filed. Climb and maintain 7,000. Departure frequency 133.65. Squawk 6543. Cleared to SeaTac as filed. Climb and maintain 7,000. Departure frequency 133.65. Squawk 6543. Sky 56. Sky 56, read back correct. Okay, so we have our clearance. Transponder set as required. All right, so we're going to turn our transponder on. And we're going to go ahead and enter the squat code assigned 6543. Enter. And 6543 confirmed. Brakes and steering. Check right slash check left. Checking right brake, left brake, steering. Flight controls, tops check slash bottoms checked. Checking elevator. Letter. Flaps, check operation. Flaps. Good to go. GPS slash FMC programmed. Flight management computer is programmed. Inverters checked. Inverters check. Test one. Test two. Check. Autopilot and flight director. Check slash heading altitude select. Alright, so we're bringing up our autopilot. Comes up big. I'm going to shrink it down. And I like to stack it here under the flight management. So we're going to go ahead and put our cruise altitude in here, 7,000. So that's set. We're going to turn on our flight director. You'll notice right here it's not on. Now the flight director indicated by this magenta indicator is good to go. We're going to go ahead and set this up for nav. So we're arming the nav. And we're going to, this is something that is often overlooked, but critical. We want to make sure that nav source, which is right here, is set appropriately. In this case, it, it needs to be set to GPS. We're going to confirm it by pressing the nav source button. And now GPS is showing on the nav HSI button on our autopilot. So we're good to go there. We're going to press altitude select. So altitude select is armed. And we're going to climb via indicated airspeed. And I'm going to use the heading, the uh, airspeed bug, to and throttle control to to, uh, to control the climb and the descents. Okay, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and declutter this. Anti-ice slash de-ice, check and as required. Okay, we're checking. It's not required today based on the temperature and weather conditions. Thrust reversers, checked. Checking thrust reversers. And thrust reversers, good. Flight instruments, checked. Flight instruments, good to go. Altimeter slash altitude selector, set. We're set at 7,000. Radio slash avionics, set. Okay, let's double check. So right now we're tuned to ground. Here's our tower frequency. Our departure frequency is going to be 133.65. We'll go ahead and put that in when we're taxi over to the runway. Fuel quantity slash balance checked. Rechecking fuel quantity. Uh, we're good to go there. More than enough fuel for today's flight. Pressure source selector checked. LH slash RH slash norm. All right, we're going to place the pressure source selector to normal. Good to go. Speed brakes check slash retracted. All right, we're going to go ahead and extend the speed brake. Go ahead and confirm it is extended on both sides. Back in the airplane. Flaps set seven degrees. Let's go ahead and retract the speed brake and confirm. And they are Trims set three trim wheels. All right, so flaps are going to be set for seven degrees for takeoff. And we're going to confirm the setting of all three trim wheels set for takeoff. Elevator's good.
Both aileron and rudder are centered. Good to go for takeoff. Takeoff data slash bugs. Review. Takeoff data, good to go. We're going to climb 7,000. Our GPS is programmed. Our heading bug is set for 170 departure runway. Good to go. Crew briefing, complete. Taxi check, complete. Before takeoff. All right. So let's go ahead and request a taxi over to runway 17. Cobra Ground Sky 56, taxi IRFR with Lima. Sky 56, taxi runway 17 via Alpha. Taxi runway 17 via Alpha, Sky 56. All right, let's go ahead and remove that, the FMC for now, so we can have a clear view or clear. Go ahead and taxi over to 17. Ignitions on. Ignitions left and right on. Anti ice slash de ice as required. Currently in the off position. Pito slash static heat on. Pito static heat on. Exterior lights on. Put our landing lights on. Recognition light on. Transponder slashed gas on. Transponder is on and reporting altitude. TCAS on. Collision avoidance is active. Engine instruments checked. Engine instruments are in the green. Anti skid on. Anti skid on. Annunciator panel checked. Annunciator panel checked. Departure runway bugs aligned slash verified. Bugged and verified. Before takeoff check complete after takeoff and climb all right let's go ahead and contact tower so we're going to switch over to tower 118.5 confirm 118.5 now we're going to go ahead and set up our 
departure frequency 133.651. 33.651. Go ahead and put that in standby for COM1. COM1 is on. Tacoma Tower, Sky 56, holding short at 17, ready for departure. Sky 56, wind calm, runway 17, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 17, Sky 56. Landing gear and lights, up and off. Landing gear is up, landing lights are off. Yaw dampener, on. Yaw dampener is on. Flaps, up. Flaps are retracted. Confirmed. Engine sink, on. Engine sink, on. Ignitions, normal. Ignitions. Norm left, norm right. Climb power set. Climb power set. Where that tone was 1,000 from target altitude of 7,000. Anti ice slash to ice, as required. Not required. Pressurization checked. Pressurization. 700 set, 700 confirmed. Passenger advisory lights, as required. 
passenger visor light is on, we're going to leave it. Exterior lights, as required. Exterior lights, good. And we're leveling off at cruise altitude of 7,000. Climb check, complete. Okay, so right about now, uh, tower would probably contact us and hand us over to departure. So I'm going to simulate that. Sky 56, contact departure on 133.65. Over to departure, Sky 56. So I'm going to go ahead. Switch over to departure. Departure, Sky 56, with you, 7,000. Sky 56, roger, radar contact, 6 miles south, Tacoma Narrows Airport, altimeter 2901. 2991 for Sky 56. Okay, so we just made our turn from Caro. Now we're going to be direct RP intersection, which is 31 nautical miles. We're going to go through some. Uh, Additional checklist items. Transition, climb. A transition climb would come into effect if we were climbing uh, above one th uh, 18,000 feet or flight level 180. Altimeters, 29.92 slash 29.92 cross checked. At that point, we would set our altimeters to 2902 on both pilot and co pilot altimeters. That is not required today. Recognition lights, off. Recognition lights, off. Oxygen, check right slash check left. Checking oxygen, and oxygen in the green. Pressurization, check. Pressurization is checked and good. Air conditioning, fan or off. Air conditioning set to fan. Transition check, complete. Again, that check would not be necessary for today's flight. We went through it anyway. Descent. We'll go through the descent checklist at the appropriate time. So right now, uh, indicated airspeed is 242, and uh, ground speed showing 276 knots. Defog fan, hot. Okay, that's a descent checklist item. We'll get to that a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up our chart again. Uh, so right now we're right in here between Caro and RP. And then we're going to make a right turn direct to low foul at 7,000. We're going to begin a descent from low foul. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, from low foul to Griffey because we need to cross Griffey at 6,000, not above and not below. So we're going to go ahead and set up our autopilot to make that descent to 6,000 at the appropriate time. I'm going to arm the altitude select, and when the time comes, I'll go ahead and press the indicated airspeed button, and I'll control the descent with throttle. A beautiful day here in the Seattle area. up, we're going to switch to VOR1, execute, 
and at that point the autopilot will intercept and hold the localizer and it will intercept and hold the glide slope. 13 nautical miles to RP intersection. Showing ground speed of 267, indicated airspeed 233. Seattle Tacoma INTL Information Lima. 1700 Zulu weather. Wind like. Okay, we're still with Lima. And we've copied Lima information. I'm going to go ahead and switch the altimeter over to the current SeaTac setting, which is 2989. Seattle Tacoma INTL Information Lima. 1700 Zulu weather. Wind light and variable, visibility more than 10. Sky clear, temperature 21, dew point 9. Altimeter 2989. 2989. Arriving runways 16 left, 16 center, 16 right, departing runway. Okay, altimeters are set. And the next thing uh, that would happen if I wasn't handed over to a different approach controller, they would hand me over to tower and SeaTac and the tower frequency and SeaTac for runway 16 left is 120.9 or 5. So, 120.95 is in standby. Good to go. Four miles to RP. Change the range here to give us some situational awareness. Okay, so we're going to make it a right turn from RP to low foul. That's only four nautical miles away. Once we hit low foul, we're going to initiate our descent 6,000. Go ahead and start slowing the airplane down. I'm going to set our descent speed from 200 knots. There's our right turn to low fall. And once we hit low fall, we're going to go under the hood, simulate instrument meteorological conditions. So we won't come out from under the hood until we reach our decision altitude, which uh, for ILS runway 16 left, and we are a category Bravo aircraft, is 632 feet. So we'll come out from under the hood as soon as we reach decision height. to low foul. 6,000 set, altitude select armed. Showing uh, 179, 178 knots indicated. Ground speed 206. One to go to low foul. Now, as soon as I initiate the descent, since we're within 1,000 of our target altitude, you're going to hear the tone. I'm going to initiate our descent now. There's the tone. Vertical speed indicator showing a descent rate of 2,000 feet per minute. So again, the autopilot is trying to reach my preset airspeed of 200 for the descent. Should be leveling off here right about now. Okay, we're going to go under the hood and leveling off at 6,000. So now I'm going to preset my next descent, which is going to be 4,000. And that's going to happen once we hit Griffey. Cross Griffey at 6,000 and then descend to 4,000 
to intercept Helzer, which is the localizer. And at that point is when we're going to switch the nav source from GPS to VOR. Foot warmers, closed right slash closed left. Now we're going through the descent checklist. Airflow distribution, cockpit. Airflow distribution is set to cockpit. Pressurization, set. Pressurization is set. Windshield bleed air slash manual valves, low slash max. Windshield bleed air, set left and right. Anti-ice slash to ice, as required. Not required. Fuel. Balance slash cross feed off. Fuel is balanced, cross feed is off. Descent check complete. Approach. Altimeters set slash cross checked. Altimeters are set 2989, pilot, co pilot. Belts and harnesses on right slash on left. Passenger seats upright slash outboard. Cabin and emergency exits, clear. Recognition lights, on. Recognition light, on. Landing data, set slash posted. Landing data Anti -skid, set. Anti-skid, on. Anti-skid, on. Pressurization, checked. Pressurization is checked. Avionics slash flight instruments, set. Set. Approach briefing, complete. Passenger advisory lights, Pass slash safety. They're set to pass slash safety. GPS selector to NAV. Okay, we're going to do that once we cross. Actually, we're not going to do that until we intercept the localizer. But as soon as we cross Griffith, we're going to set the autopilot to approach. And then we're going to initiate our descent. So two nautical miles to go to Griffith. Check. Complete. Before landing. Landing gear. Down three green no red slash verified. Landing gear. Down. Three green no red verified. Ignitions. On. Ignitions. On left on right. Engine sink. Off. Engine sink. Pressurization, check zero differential. Pressurization, check. Landing lights, on. Landing lights, on. Flaps, landing. Flaps. We're going to begin with seven degrees. Now we're coming up on Helzer intersection. Two miles to Helzer. Once we reach Helzer, we'll go ahead and add an additional set flaps to 20 degrees and then to 35 degrees and maintain our
final approach, speed of 96 knots. Coming up on Helzer. Helzer, and now we're going to change our nav source to VOR. There's our glide slope, and since we're set to approach, and our nav source is set to the localizer, the airplane is going to maintain glide slope and localizer all the way down to the ground. We're going to add flaps setting 20 degrees and we're going to slow the airplane down to 96 knots one nautical mile from Carfo intersection which is right here between Helzer and Carfo cross Carfo to 3200 down to Douglas 1900 we're going to add our final flaps 35 degrees Slow the airplane down at 96 knots. Again, we'll come out from under the hood at 632 feet. <clears throat> that point, here, probably before now, even the controller would have handed us off to tower. We'll go ahead and simulate that now. Sky 56, contact tower 133, 120.9 or 5. Over to tower Sky 56. Seattle Tower, Sky 56, runway 16, left approach. Sky 56, roger, wind calm, runway 16, left, third land. Third land, runway 16, left, Sky 56. All right, three miles from Douglas. Slope slope's good, localizer's good, reducing throttle, Let's slow the airplane down to 96 knots, 2500, it's uh, 2500 HEL, annunciator panel, Clear. Enunciator panel clear. Speed brakes, prior to 50 feet AGL, retracted. Not needed. Autopilot slash yaw dampener, off. We'll turn that off once we reach decision height. <coughs> One to go for Douglas. A little bit of power. Let's bring us up to 96 knots. Slope looking good, localizer good. AGL. 
video. Six, clear of the runway at hotel. Sky 56, taxi to parking via Bravo, remain this frequency. Parking via Bravo, remain this frequency, Sky 56. New taxi over to North Parking. Declutter. Before landing check, complete. After landing, anti-skid, off. Anti-skid, off. Pitot heat slash anti-ice slash de-ice, off. Pito heat, off. Ignitions, normal. Ignitions, normal left, normal right. Exterior lights, as required. Good to go on exterior Stand lights. Stand by gyro. Off slash caged. Standby gyro off. Transponder, as required. We're gonna leave it alone. Radar, standby. Turn off our TCAS. Flaps, up. Flaps are up. And confirmed. Speed brakes, retracted. They weren't used, they are retracted. Trims, reset. Reset. After landing check, complete. Shut down check parking brake, as required. Alright, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's park over here. Uh, park next to that airplane. North ramp. I always find it amusing that this, the X-Plane simulator has these cars driving around on the movement area.
Okay, park the brake on. Transponder, stand by. Turn the transponder off. Avionics and inverters, off. Avionics, off. Inverter, off. Overhead slash defog fans, off. Fans are off. Freon A slash C, off. AC is off. Throttles, cut off. Throttles, we're gonna set cut off. So we're gonna lift the gate, drop it down. Lift the gate, drop down. Exterior lights, off. Exterior lights, off. Passenger advisory lights, off. It is off. Battery switch, off. Battery switch, off. Clock, zeroed. Shutdown check, complete. Alright. Get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you were able to glean some useful information from it. Um, the focus really mainly was uh, startup and checklist items. I hope to do a, another video in the near future. We'll do a longer flight, and get up above transition altitude, um, transition altitude, and um, possibly even interface with uh, actual controllers on Pilot Edge. So. Again, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.